Warrington Cemetery today. A beautiful place this is. I'll turn the camera around in a minute and give you guys a view. And we've come today to see the final resting place of George Formby. So I hope you like this one. If you'd like to see any other famous person's graves or any parks or gardens just let me know down in the comments below the show business career of george formby spanned exactly 40 years beginning in 1921 until his death in 1961. during that period he appeared in 21 hit films cut over 230 records made hundreds of stage performances appeared in two Royal Command performances and entertained an estimated 3 million Allied servicemen and women during World War II throughout Europe and the Middle East, although he never performed in the USA. He did make personal appearances and was quite popular in Canada, Australia, New Zealand and South Africa. By 1939, George Formby was the most popular and highest paid entertainer in the British Isles, and was estimated to be earning over £100,000 a year. The secret of his success was a unique combination of personality, natural ability and talented, coupled with the driving force of his wife, Beryl, as his manager, with his natural humour, warmth and friendliness. George could hold a live audience in the palm of his hand as he sang and played the ukulele in his own imitable style. He seemed to have the ability to make people enjoy what he did, and his audience always called for more. The story behind George's rise to popularity in show business is an interesting, fascinating one. He was born George Hoy Booth on the 26th of May 1904 in Wigan, Lancashire. He was the eldest of seven children, having four sisters and two brothers. His father, George Formby Sr., real name James Booth, was already a famous stage actor and comedian when young George was born. He never wanted any of his family to enter show business, and so young George was sent to become an apprentice jockey at the age of seven years. He rode his first professional race at the age of ten, and weighing only three stones, thirteen pounds, when his father died suddenly in 1921, encouraged by his mother and being too heavy to continue horse racing, he decided to follow in his father's footsteps, calling himself George Hoy. He took to the stage using his father's material, the results were disastrous. After a couple of years learning the business and getting married to Beryl, he met a fellow actor who strummed a banjo ukulele for fun between shows. He sold the instrument to George for two pounds and ten shillings, and George quickly learned a couple of songs accepting a bet that he, he dare not use the banjo ukulele in his act. George played at the Alhambra Theatre in Barnsley and brought the house down. Jordan's and Uke were inseparable from that point on. Each of his film contained three or four songs which were invariably released as 70s RPM records and on sheet music. These included such titles as The Winter Cleaner, Fan Life Fanny, Rising in the TT Races, and probably his most famous song, written by Noel Gay, Leaning on a Lamp Post. In 1960, George made his lack record, Happy Go Lucky Me, and in December of the same year, made what was to be his last television programme, a 40 minute one man show called The Friday Show. It was to be a confessional with George, admitting that Beryl had been the driving force behind his success that he couldn't read and write properly, that he didn't understand music, and that he regretted not having any children. His wife Beryl watched the programme from his sick bed. She was dying from leukaemia, but was still able to offer a usual critique of George's performance. Beryl died on Christmas Eve in 1960. George was appearing in a pantomime in Bristol and returned to the show immediately after the funeral. There were still a few surprises to come, a few weeks after Beryl's death, George suddenly announced his engagement to Bathausen, a young 36-year-old school teacher. George knew her through having purchased some motor cars from her father's garage. 
The wedding was planned for early spring. Unfortunately, George had another heart attack. And although he appeared to be recovering, he died in Preston St. Joseph's Rome Catholic Hospital on the 6th of March, 1961, at the young age of 56 years. He was buried in Warrington Cemetery in the family grave, and an estimated 100,000 mourners lined the streets on the day of the funeral to show their respect for one of the greatest entertainers this country has ever known. So here it is. So, in loving remembrance of George Formby, comedian, died 8th of February 1921, aged 45 years. After life's fitful fever, he sleeps well. So that was George Formby Senior, that was George Formby's dad. So then we have George Formby, OBE, son of the above, who died on the 6th of March 1961, aged 56 years. A tradition nobly upheld. And also, Eliza Ann, devoted wife of George Senior, who died on the 31st of July 1981, aged 102 years. That's a good age. Where the little flowers are, your songs are ended, but the melodies linger on. Mother and Louis. As you can see, this is a very big cemetery. I will put some pictures in for you. I do hope you enjoyed this one guys, like I said, George Formby, I remember watching all the films, I remember his songs, so, a thank you to George, hope you enjoyed the video, I'll see you on the next one, bye.